Good morning. Good morning. It is good to be back in Texas. <laughs> Woo! Man, thank you for allowing Cheryl and I to get away. Uh, we missed last Sunday, and we were, uh, I don't remember where we were in Sunday, Cheryl. Where were we? We were on a train. Just like Johnny Cash, we were on a train. I want you to repeat after me. Gelato is of the Lord. Go ahead and say it with me, okay? <laughs> Gelato is of the Lord. No, you've got to repeat it with me. Here we go. Gelato is of the Lord. Okay. If you've never had Italian gelato, whoo, I almost didn't come home, but, uh, but I think you might be able to get it here somewhere. I don't know. But uh, we had a great time. Um, you know, I, I want to thank Marv for filling in last week, and more than filling in, I've actually got a chance to, to listen to Marv's message online, and thank you, brother, for bringing the, the Word of God. You know, it's a blessing. Um, when I remember when I first became pastor here, it was uh, Terry and I were, we was basically Terry and I up here on the stage, and that was scary. Terry was scared to death because I was the only one up here with her. But uh, it, it's just, uh, God has brought in amazing people uh, to our worship, uh, to our church, uh, our, our praise team. We have three teams that rotate through here. This morning, Trevor was on call, and we thought Trevor, he thought he was going to be able to be here, and he was here, and got about halfway through practicing and got called out, and Larry, thank you for stepping in. I mean, it's just amazing just, you know, just kind of uh, just step in there and do it, you know, and, and then the technical, Billy mentioned the technical difficulties. Alan back there, bless your heart, Alan. It, uh, he's it, normally I know it's kind of technical, but normally with the overheads, you just kind of get a song started and you just you just kind of push that down arrow and it just leads you right to the next screen. He's having to kind of more or less restart every song, every every screen. So it's like a screen, go back, restart song, go another screen, go back, and and so he's doing an amazing job. We to keep up with all that, we will get that technical problem figured out this week. But just, it's just amazing how God has brought so many people into our church with so many gifts, and I'm, I'm very blessed and appreciative of that. If you are visiting with us this morning, um, first of all, I, I hope that you feel the love of Christ. I mean, you know, if, if Christ is not here, if the Holy Spirit is not here, I mean, there's lots of places we can go and just gather and fellowship, right? But, but when we come to worship, there's, there's, there's something more. Uh, God is involved. God is there. And so I hope you feel that, and I hope you feel the love of his people uh, in our church. We want to be a loving church. We're not a perfect church, but we really want to be a, a church that exudes the love of Christ. There's a blue card in the pocket in front of you if you are visiting with us this morning, and we invite you to fill that out. It's a way for us to know you were here. Um, and I promise we're not going to, you know, stalk you or bug you or anything. You, you, you may get a uh, a visit or a phone call or something like that, just to say you're glad you're here, but, but we will not bug you. But, if, but it's just, uh, you know, some people want to fly under the radar, and that's okay. If you want to fly under the radar, you're welcome to come and, and do that. But we, you know, part of, and I will talk about this in my message today, part of being the, the people of God is, is uh, to be connected, to be connected. So we hope to uh, invite you to be a part of that. So if you would turn with me to 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. This book is attributed to the Apostle Paul and um, to the church that he started in Corinth. And um, it's interesting, you've heard the term... Uh, body of Christ. That's a scriptural term. It's not just something that, that we make up. Uh, it's uh, throughout scripture we're referred to as the body of Christ. And so uh, 1 Corinthians 12, I'm going to pick it up in verse 12. The body is a unit. Though it is made up of many parts, and though all of its parts are many, they form one body, so it is with Christ. For we... We're all baptized by one spirit into one body. Whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Now, I want to stop for just a second and, and point out that uh, 
I've said this before. I know that other pastors will say this, is that, you know, if you ask, it's a trick question. If somebody asks you how many churches there are in Abilene, Texas, uh, don't be fooled by that and try to come up with a number because the number is one. If we are truly the body of Christ, uh, we may meet in different places. We may call ourselves uh, with different names, but we truly are part of one body. Amen. Now, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not be, for that reason, cease to be part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, cease to be part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If, if they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. Skipping down to verse 27. Now, you, take your finger, take your index finger, and point at yourself. You, if you are in Christ, you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. Let's pray. Come, Holy Spirit. We long to hear from you. We long to be with you. We long to be near you. Speak in power and authority. Do with us as you will. Transform our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. One of Cheryl, and I, mostly Cheryl, but I like it too, one of our favorite shows is House Hunters. Anybody ever watch House Hunters? Uh, it's just fun. I mean, uh, they've got a, one for the United States, and they've also got these international house hunters where they look at homes in, in uh, other countries. And uh, what the, the basic premise of the show is there's a realtor, and there's this uh, uh, normally a couple, and, and they uh, tell them kind of what they're, what they're looking for, and they identify these three homes, and they go and they pick out the one that they, that they like the best. And it's just kind of interesting to see all the, the differences in homes. Uh, I want you to watch this video. Now, we're, again, we're having technical difficulties. Alan, if you can, roll that video. Let's, let's try it. Yeah, roll the, roll the audio too. I forgot to say that. <laughs> if you can, if you get some audio going, push it back. Okay. You know what? God doesn't need technology. Did you know that? So just, just kill it. Just kill it. It's, a, it's just a humorous video, and, and what, what uh, I'll just kind of give you a, a snapshot of the video. It's, it's this young couple, and they're, and they're church hunting, and it's just hilarious, uh, the different things that, that they are asking about. They're, uh, they're asking about uh, the pastor, does he, does he have his shirt tucked in, or does he have his shirt tucked out? Does he have frayed jeans, or are they not frayed? Does he, you know, and, and they, they go on, and, look, and, you know, they talk about... Uh, the, they have the, certain churches have uh, the monitor that comes up when your child is, you know, needing attention, and it has you have your child's name, and they call it the the parents walk of shame when you walk out, and <laughs> and we don't have that, but uh, just and 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 they're they're talking about how they, you know, they're they're interested in the name of the the church, you know, is it a cool name, uh, and uh, do they they let out in time to make making time for kickoff and all of those things. And, and so the point, uh, it, it's, it, had we watched the video, I think you would have enjoyed it. It's humorous. Maybe we can do it later. But um, the, the point of, of that video is the question that comes to my mind, are we consumers 
as Christians or are we servants? I mean, that, that's, that question comes to my mind often. Um, we, uh, you know, Cheryl and I have done it. Before I was a pastor, we, we moved to Lubbock uh, a few years ago when the girls were little, and uh, you, you're, you're shopping for churches. And, and um, you know, our, our tendency is, you know, do we like do we like the church or the people friendly? Or do we like the pastor? It was, a, it was a message, what we wanted it to be. Do they have programs that we want? And, and, I don't, and I'm not saying those are bad things to be looking for those things. But, but do we ever ask the question, is this where God would have me be? Can, God, can I serve here? Is there a place for me to be part of the body and to serve? Or are our questions more like, what do they have to offer to me? You know, um, so today's message is, we are created for covenant. We are created for covenant. And that's not a word that we use all the time, but it's a very, uh, not, notice my Italian flair with the, with, the, uh, with the slide this morning. I, I had to get a little... Um, of the Sistine Chapel in there, where Cheryl and I got to see the Sistine Chapel and in the Vatican and so forth. And um, but but even in that painting that Michelangelo did on the ceiling of of the Sistine Chapel, there's the the painting of God's creation, his his interpretation of God's creation of Adam and how God. And there's this there's this longing as the as the hands come to touch. There's this longing that God has for relationship with his creation. And then then there's this need of God's creation uh, to be one with God. So there's this, from the very beginning, uh, God is a God of covenant, a God of relationship. God went on in in his word. He, uh, as we see it throughout the, the, the Old Testament covenant through Abraham, we see all these different covenants that God makes. And, and a covenant basically um, is, is a promise. Uh, it's a promise. And uh, the covenant was a very serious word in, biblically. It's a very serious word. Um, God said that he was going to create, he was going to co- make covenant with, with us, his people, through Abraham, and that he would be our God and we would be his people. There would be this covenantal relationship between him and his people. And I will say he's also calling us as believers in Christ in this passage, the body of Christ, that just the sheer connectedness of the body. You know, if now mine feels like it sometimes, but our body is, is it's in one piece. It's together. I mean, when there's different parts of our body as the scripture lays out, but we're together. There's a, there is a unity and a oneness to the body, even though we have different parts. Now, so I want to, real quickly, I want to kind of paint this, this picture of the Old Testament, what's known as the Old Covenant, and then Christ came and instituted a new covenant. Uh, he changed things or he fulfilled things. In the Old Testament, the Old Covenant was established through animal sacrifices. I, I love, I, I can't remember exactly, I have to look up the reference, but there's a passage where uh, God is talking about, um, the, well, the tradition with, between, in the, with the Jewish people, when, they made, when two people made covenant with one another, they would, this is kind of gross, but it's the way they did it, they would take animals, and it was always their best animals, and they would cut them in half. And they would separate the animals. They'd put a, the, the one half of the animal over here, and they'd put one half of the animal over there. And there was obviously, that was, there was blood involved. And, and they would, the two people who were making covenant, making promises to one another, would walk down through the p- middle path of these animals that they had both sacrificed some of their prime stock uh, and making this covenant together, there were, so the Old Testament covenant involved sacrifice, animal sacrifices. The, the new covenant, we know through Scripture, that the new covenant is established through Christ's sacrificial death, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. 
So, so no longer do we as people need to sacrifice our animals because, uh, but to make covenant with one another and to make covenant with God because God has given us his lamb and made, made covenant with us through the sacrificial death of Christ. So the, in the Old Testament, the sign of the covenant was circumcision. Again, uh, a bloody act. There was blood involved in that process. So, so a, the sign of the covenant in the Old Testament was circumcision. Uh, the sign of the covenant in, in uh, the new covenant is baptism. We were, gonna, uh, we were going to have a, an infant baptism this morning, which I know is foreign to some of you that weren't brought up in a tradition, uh, church tradition that, that celebrated infant baptisms. But when we do that, hopefully in the next week or two, um, I will talk about what this means. It's not a moment of salvation. It's a moment of bringing that child in under the covenant of Christ. A sign of the covenant is baptism. Now, I would note that the, in the Old Testament sign of the covenant, circumcision, the child was brought up at eight days old, and, and the child had no decision-making piece of that process. The child was eight days, couldn't, didn't, couldn't say yes or no to that process, but the parents were presenting the child to receive the sign of the covenant. In other words, and, and, and here's what's interesting that we, that we miss about baptism is the piece that God plays in that. Hello, I hope you're listening to me. Because we, we see baptism, too many times we see baptism as what we're doing, the decision we're making, the, the step that we're taking. But we forget God's involved in this too. God is involved. So, so the sign of the New Testament covenant, the new covenant is baptism, sign of the Old Testament circumcision. We remember the Old Testament, or they remembered the Old Testament covenant through the sprinkling of blood. Once a year, the, the priest, the high priest, would, there would be sacrifice, and, and, and they would go into the Holy of Holies and the altar, and they would, they would sprinkle blood, and they would come out, and they would sprinkle blood on the people, and it was a, a way of remembering this covenant that we have with God. He will be our God. We will be his people. Well, when we once, Scripture doesn't say do it once a month, but we happen to do com communion once a month. When, uh, and we can read it on the front of our table. What, is, what did Jesus say when he instituted um, Holy Communion? Remember me. So there is, a, uh, there is a, a remembering of the covenant. When we come and partake of Holy Communion, that is a way of remembering the sacrificial death of Christ. So all of this is kind of really a side point to, to the, the message today. But I want you to understand that God is a God of covenant. He's been, in, he's been in covenant from the very beginning, and he's calling us to be in covenant. Now, I'm skipping ahead to something I was going to say later, but I want to say it now. Uh, and, and at the end of the service, I'm going to give everyone an opportunity uh, to respond uh, to us as a church. You may have been a member here 50 years or whatever, and so I would be asking you, do you still, um, do you still renew your covenant to, be, to be, with, be in covenant with us? You Maybe you've been visiting here for 2, 10, 15 years and never joined, so you will have an, an opportunity this morning to make a decision for that. Perhaps this is your first Sunday. Um, but but the, my, my question is this. I was asking, it's, it's frustrating for a pastor. I mean, that's what we do. It's frustrating. It's not because I'm, uh, my, my goal is never to, uh, golly, if we can just have, you know, double how many joined this year from last year. I mean, that's been a successful year. That, I want to see lives transformed. I mean, that, that's what I want to see. But it is, but it is, I do wonder, I do wonder that question of, of um, people that, have come here for a long time and haven't joined. I, I ask myself that question, why? I mean, of course, a pastor's, uh, our inclination is to go, what did I do? If somebody, and somebody used to be really regular and all of a sudden they stopped coming, Marv, yeah? What did I do? Did, did I say something wrong? Did I do something wrong? Did I not visit when I should have? Did I, did I, was I, did they, were they offended by this or that? 
so pastors tend to internalize those things, and maybe sometimes it's, that's accurate. But, but uh, so the, I was talking to another pastor recently, um, and I said, man, man do, do, do you, and he's, he's been a very successful pastor for many decades, and I asked him, do you, does that, do you wonder why that happens? Why people don't join the church or, or whatever? And, and he said, well, I found that young people especially just don't see the need for it. They just kind of like, why do I join? And he said, I've, I've shifted to uh, focusing on getting people engaged, just engaged, involved, rather than joining. And, and so, and I get that. I, I really do. I do get that. But my question that's, because that's just the way I am, I, always, I question, is not why do I need to be a member, but why not? That's my question. I'm like, why not? I mean, you know, um, I've used this an illustration before, but when I, my dad's last two or three years, uh, I took him to the Lions Club because that was important to him and he couldn't go, and so I took him. And, and every, almost every week I was there, though. Dan, you going to join our Lions Club? And there's nothing wrong with the Lions Club, and Dad's Lions Club had some great people in it, and, and I loved them, but I, I told him, I said, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm just bringing Dad. I love you guys. I think y'all are awesome, but I can't. I can't be what I would need to be to be a member of your Lions Club. I, I can't be involved the way I would want to be involved and so forth. So I, I'm not going to join. I had a very specific reason, and I told him I'm, I'm, that's why. Um, but if, if, I, if I had an intention to be a lion, they call themselves lions, if I had an intention to be a lion, it's like, and I like that one, I would have joined it. But the, I had no intention to be a lion. I just, it just wasn't, it wasn't on my radar. God is calling us, church, to be in covenant with each other, not, not to just find a place that we like and, and, and slip in and slip out and, and have our feet, you know, feed our soul and slip in and slip out. And that's fine. I, I, I want you to not, I really don't want you to receive any shame from anything I'm saying. If you're not a member and you don't have any intentions to be a member, you're welcome to come here forever. But I just would ask you to just ask the Lord, is, this, is that what you want for me? Is this the place you would have me to, to not just be and be, come and be a consumer, but be a servant, to serve out of this place? So we are created. I'm going to move into my points here. We are created for covenant because... We are called to be one. It's not a, I mean, it's not a request. It's not something God says, well, if you really feel like it, you need to be one. I mean, over and over throughout Scripture, we are told that to be one, to be one. And uh, the passage we read today, the body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts, and though all of its parts are many, they form one body, so it is with Christ. If we're in Christ... We belong to the church, and he's calling us to be one with one another. He's calling us uh, to be one. Ephesians, again, Paul's writings to the church in Ephesus says, There is one body and one spirit, just as, we, as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God. If only they would use the word one, we might understand this better. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. We are called to be one. It's not, it's not, it's not optional in Christ. And I hear all the time, I hear different people go, well, I'm a Christian, but I, you know, church hurt me or a pastor hurt me or this or that and everything. It's like, you can be a Christian without going to church. And it's like, yeah, you know what? I tell people that I'm a golfer too. I hadn't played in three years. And before that, I played once. So, I mean, you know, like, I'm not much of a golfer. In all honesty, Steve, you've played with me, yes? It's true. <laughs> <laughs> so, boy, that was rude, Steve. <laughs> I believe that was the rudest thing I've ever had said to me. But, <laughs> but am I really a golfer? I mean, you got to play. 
you got to play. We are called to be one. Throughout Scripture, I mean, God just oozes unity. He oozes covenant. He oozes relationship. God himself, who he is, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, even God himself is relational with himself. Marriage, we, we see in the, the analogies in marriage that we are the bride of Christ, that, that Christ is our bridegroom, that, that the two shall become one flesh. And, and, I, and please, if, you know, don't, again, please, I'm not, I'm not trying to shame anybody. I'm just, I'm just trying to speak the truth here. It's the difference between living together. I know young people today, that's a, more of a common thing, living together and getting married. I tell people, that I've married people that will come, and some pastors won't do it. They won't, they won't marry someone who's been living together. And I'm like, really? I mean, they're trying, to, they're trying to make a step here and get it right. I mean, you know, let's help them. Let's help them. Let's help them understand the difference. Because living together, there's no covenant. Hell, shake your head if you're listening to me. There's no covenant. We can leave any old time we want to. Now, I know we can in marriage, too, that that's become more popular. But in marriage, there's been covenant. So you have to break the covenant for that to be uh, separated. There has to be a, a separation and a break. But in living together, it's just like, I just changed my mind. Covenant. The two should become one flesh. Adoption. And I, I see it. Uh, I, I, we've got, I know we've got some foster parents in our family, in, in our church family, and uh, God bless you, man. Um, I don't know what, I don't know how you do it, and, and may God bless you, because um, that's, that's difficult to, to care for a child, and that child may or may not end up staying in the family. But until they are adopted, they're and I'm, this is not a harsh thing, it's just reality. They're, not, they're just visiting. You're just a temporary stop. And, and adoption makes, it makes covenant. Now, again, that's not saying foster family. That's, foster family is a godly thing, and I, I affirm it wholeheartedly. I remember the, the movie uh, what, uh, Blindside. Anybody remember the movie Blindside? And, and the, the large black guy that ended up going and playing NFL football, and he's, and he's living with this, this white family, and they, they grow to love each other. You know, they first, they're just getting him off the street, and they grow to love each other. And, and over a period of time, I don't know how long it was, months or maybe even a year or two, uh, the, the husband and the wife decide, we want to adopt him and make him part of our family officially. And so they go to him, and they're like, Hey, uh, we really would like to adopt you. And he's confused. Like, what, what? And we want you to be part of our family. He's like, I thought I already was. <laughs> you know? But in his mind, it, he wasn't a foster kid. He was part of the family. There was covenant there. He, was, he belonged to the family. Now, this, I don't know why I'm, I'm weird this way, but I... I a, a negative vision of this, of not un, being unity. I picture that, you know, we all have these kind of images of heaven, what heaven might look like, and um, God's Word says that we don't, we don't know for sure. We, won't, we, don't, we can't have the full understanding of that, but we know it's going to be good. And, and I, I envision, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see my dad again and my brother and my granny and I'm going to see the Lord face to face. So we, so we have this vision, but the, the vision that I don't have is this little Christian sitting over in the corner by himself. Just all by himself. I'm, I'm in heaven. I'm right here. Is that what we, does anybody have that vision of heaven? We're going to be together. We're going to be in covenant. We're going to be with the Lord. We're going to be with the loved ones who've gone before us. And, we're, and, and there's going to be great rejoicing. And there's going to be relationship and, and all of those things. And it's like, holy cow, it's almost like we're created for covenant. 
Secondly, we're created for covenant because we need each other. Man, don't we need each other? I, I got to tell you, uh, we, Cheryl and I had a great trip in Italy, it was, and everything went really as smoothly as I think it possibly could go. Uh, we came back alive. That was a good thing. And, but the greatest joy I had was coming home and seeing my family. And then right second was seeing you this morning. Y'all, I'm sorry, you ran a close second. <laughs> but we need each other. You know, um, the scripture in, that we read today in verse 17 says, if the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? And that <laughs> makes me think of Cheryl and I all the time because I literally, I mean, you could like stand in my ear and shout and I'm probably going to have to ask you what, you, you know, my favorite line is, what'd you say? And, and Cheryl... Bless her little old heart. She, she gets her alarm clock and she gets her glasses and she gives her one of these. She, I'm sorry, Cheryl. I'm telling your secrets. <laughs> without her glasses, she's hopeless. With, and, and I can see pretty good. I mean, I'm not perfect without my glasses, but I can still function pretty well. But I can't hear it thunder. And the, between the two of us, we make one good person. I mean... <laughs> It would kind of, you know, we balance each other. And I hadn't show, told a shoulder story in a while. Some of y'all don't know this, but my, my shoulders got, I got hurt playing football in high school. And, and, and they come, they haven't in a while because I've learned what I can and cannot do. But when I was younger and very active, my shoulders, it's really gross. You ought to see it, right, Johnny? My shoulders come out of socket. Uh, when I'd play basketball or something, and it's kind of like, you know, and you'd be like, y'all wait for me, you know, just a minute. And I, you know, my arm would literally be out of socket. And, and what, I ha what I have learned over the years is, as I've gotten older and more experienced and, and less active, is I've learned that you can't do that. <laughs> that right there, you can't do that. You see, I've had surgeries, but they never, they're still not, they'll, you know, this is, this is sad, but my surgeon, the last time I was in there, uh, he took an x-ray. This was a few years ago. He took an x-ray, and, he, and he's in the room, and he's looking at this x-ray, and he said, there's your problem. And, boy, I'm getting over there with the x-ray. What is it? What is it? And he goes, Shh, down to my birthday. <laughs> he was a friend of mine, by the way, but was a friend of mine. But he, went, he said, there's your problem. You, you're the year, this year right here. But, um, but we, we learn to function, church. We're all, we're all messed up. If you, if you don't realize you're messed up, ask somebody and they'll tell you you're messed up. Because <laughs> I'm messed up. We're broken. And we learn to, to function in our brokenness, don't we? We learn that, um, you know, if we're, if we're lucky, we learn to function in our brokenness. Sometimes our brokenness rules us. That's not God's will for us. God's will for us is wholeness, wellness. And uh, I, I want to say this. A missing or wounded part of the body makes for an incomplete body. When, when if, if there's some of us, if, if we're wounded and, and we're, and, and there's, and even, I, I think of the things, we, we have done some wonderful things through Wiley Methodist Church and things that I, I, I rejoice in, but I'm thinking if every one of us really plugged in and did what the Lord has, has gifted us to do, Oh, what, Wiley, what a powerful weapon Wiley Methodist would be in the kingdom. Um, a missing or wounded part makes for an incomplete body. If you're not, uh, I, I tell you, uh, and I just say, Larry, if Larry, if you hadn't uh, stepped in this morning, you know, we'd, uh, I'd have been singing, she'll be coming around a mountain or something. <laughs> I don't know. But, we, man, we, we need each other. We need each other. We're created for covenant because we need each other. And finally, we are created for covenant because it brings God glory. Unity brings God glory. Listen to this prayer for 
uh, unity that Jesus prayed uh, out of John 17. And Jesus is, he's, he's, he's kind of wrapping things up before he goes to the cross. And he's, it's, you ever, you ever had those, and I consider it a blessing. If I'm ever there when someone is coming to the end of their life, uh, Cheryl, I hope it doesn't embarrass you, but I, I got to say what a, I had a great visit with Cheryl Leonard. Her mom passed away this past week, and uh, the day or two before we left for Rome, I actually got to visit with her, and, and man, just the joy. She knew what was coming. She knew time was short, and she knew the Lord, and it was just like, bring it on. I am excited. I am ready. I am excited for that ch next chapter. And, and so... This, that's really kind of what's happening here with Jesus. He's coming to those that end. It's like, what does he have to say to us right before he goes to the cross? And here's what he said. My prayer is not for them alone. Speaking of the disciples, I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. That's you and me. That all of them, us, may be one. There's that word again. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Oneness convinces the world that Jesus is real. When the church is unified. Now, I, I got to tell you, uh, one, on our way home from Italy, I think I watched about 19 movies on that trip home. I mean, I don't even remember, but I remember one of them, and there was a, a, a widowed pastor in this movie. I'd never heard of the movie, but uh, he begins dating this girl, and there's these, these little church people that are giving him all sorts of grief and giving her all sorts of grief because they just think it's inappropriate that their widowed pastor should have anything to do with dating. And I remember thinking... Of course, it turns out good because it was a chick, kind of a chicky kind of flick. You know, it always turns out good. But uh, it, it, I remember thinking halfway through the movie, it's like, wow, the damage we can do when we're representing Christ, the damage we can do. I mean, if we, if we don't represent him well, if we're not, uh, if we're not uh, in covenant with one another and in unity with one another and loving on his behalf, the damage we can do. But on the flip side of that, the power that we have. Jesus says that when we're one with him, the world will believe that you, God, have sent me. Our unity convinces the world that Jesus is the Son of God. Shake your head if you're even hearing what I'm saying to you. After Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit came on the first church, this is what was said, uh, what's recorded in Acts chapter 2. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together. In the temple courts, they broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Do you hear the oneness? Praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. The people are seeing this and going, I want me some of that. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. That first sermon that Peter preached, 3,000 people came to the Lord. Unity, covenant, relationship draws people to the Lord that the world may believe. On Sunday this month, on Sunday, November the 27th, 1904, 26 people walked forward in a little one-room church shared with Wiley Independent District, Independent School District, and pledged to support this new little church called Wiley Methodist with their prayers, presence, gifts, and service. And they were down the street. We were down the street on Buffalo Gap Road, which was out in the middle of nowhere back in those days. Today, 113 years later, we, Wiley United Methodist, the United was added, we are still faithfully sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. 113 years later, and I praise God for that. Not that survival is not the thing, but, but sharing the gospel. Man, to see lives transformed, that's what fuels me. 
I hope that's what fuels you. If you wouldn't mind, just there's a blue card in the, in the bulletin this morning. I'm going to invite you. Now, again, I, w- I, want to, I want to again say, please don't receive anything that I've said with shame. That's, shame is from the enemies, not from, the, from God, and I certainly don't want to shame anyone. And you are welcome to come and be uh, part of our church as long as you want to do that without making anything official. But again, I would just ask you to ask the Lord, why? Why would you want to do that? So I'm asking you this morning, if you, again, if you've been a member 20 years, 30 years, 50 years, or not a member at all, I'd ask you to, to kind of look over this with me. You know, covenant is promises made by both parties. It's God, God promised to be there the, to Abraham, I'll be your God and you'll be my people, that, that there will be, that there will be this relational uh, uh, relationship with one another. So on the left is what I am asking to you either to, to prayerfully consider committing to, for maybe for the first time this morning and maybe once again, to pray for my church fellowship, my, my church and fellow members regularly, to, to be present in worship and other church events regularly, to support my church with my spiritual and financial gifts, to find an area of ministry where I can serve Christ and his people, to share the good news of Jesus Christ. That's when you come into official, you know, when, when I do weddings, I, I have the bride and groom, we re, they recite vows. I promise to love him, comfort him, honor and keep him, forsaking all others, be faithful to him. And, and the, so those are promises that the bride and groom make to one another. And as your church family, We make a promise to you to provide opportunities for you to grow and live out your faith in Christ, to provide opportunities for you to develop deep and lasting friendships and community with God's people, to provide opportunities for you to deepen your understanding of the Bible and the Christian faith, to be good stewards of your financial gifts to this church and God's kingdom, to provide physical, emotional, and spiritual care with great love and compassion. That's our commitment to you. And, I, and, and if you ever feel like that we are letting you down on that, I, I, my office is open. I, I welcome your, you to come and visit with me, and we'll talk things out. I meant to sign that. I'll sign those later. I meant to have my signature already on yours. And I didn't get it done. But um, if, you, if you renew that covenant this morning, I ask you to sign your name under the member line, and in just a moment, we're going to have an opportunity where you can bring those forward to the, to the prayer rail and lay those down as a, as a sign of your renewal of that. Perhaps th- you have not made that covenant with, with our church, and I invite you to consider that. If, if there's a box you can check there, p- please put your name and then bo- check that box and then your phone number and email. And if you would, if you would, write where I can tell what it is if you write to, you know, some people write a little weird and I can't read it. Uh, so if you don't get a call and you're a sloppy writer, that may be why. <laughs> so, so that's, uh, and, and it's okay, as I said, it's okay if you don't bring one of these forward. I, I invite you, if you bring it, if you bring this sheet forward, I, I want you to do that uh, through the prompting of the Holy Spirit. So if our praise team will come, as they're coming up, we're, they're going to lead us in this last song. And that's when I invite you to, to bring those sheets forward. I also want to tell you that um, next Sunday at 9 a.m., I'm having a discovery class in the Fellowship Hall um, th- where uh, we talk about the church and how to, how to make your membership official and who we are and what we're about and how you can be engaged and let you ask questions and so forth. Um, that's next Sunday at 9 a.m. that that will be offered. But I still would, would appreciate this filled out today if that's so on your heart. So as we stand, let me pray as we start this last song. Father, we, um, first of all, it's just, it's really humbling that you love us enough to make relationship with us. 
that, you, that to even desire that, Lord, I, I'm just, I think about what a knucklehead I am, that you would want relationship with me. I fail you all the time, and yet you love me. So, Lord, I thank you for assembling this body of believers that you have, that we call ourselves Wiley Methodist Church. But, Father, we're really your children. I thank you for that, and, I, and I, I pray, God, that you would stir our hearts and you would deepen us and you would show us how we, uh, how we move forward. Lord, bless those this morning. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. Hi, this is Pastor Jeff Hatcher with Wiley United Methodist Church in Abilene, Texas. I want to thank you for listening to this, uh, this message from God's Word today. I want to remind you that you have a Savior whose name is Jesus Christ, and He came to set you free. He came to heal the brokenhearted. He did that by hanging on a cross in our place. If you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to, I want to invite you to do that today. If you want to do that, just pray this prayer with me. Father, uh, I repent of my sins. I confess to you that I am a sinner. I ask Jesus Christ to come into my heart, to free me from my sin, to, to be my Savior and my Lord. Uh, help me to be the creation that you have, have created me to be. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer today for the first time, I want to ask you to do four things. First of all, I want to ask you to, to share that decision with a member of the clergy. Let them know that you've made that decision. Secondly, I want, you, want to ask you to be baptized. God's Word says that uh, believers in Jesus Christ, we affirm that and we celebrate that through baptism. And thirdly, I want to ask you to begin to read God's Word, to get into His Word, not just because uh, we think that that makes us good, but because this is the Word of life. And finally, to, to find a Bible-believing and preaching church to be a part of. If you've made that decision, I also welcome uh, a conversation with you. You can reach me at jhatcher at wileymethodist.org, and I'd be happy to come along your side in that journey. God bless you.